Hello, I'm Cassie Nall. This week on Suncoast FYI, Paragon Art Festival, an author of political thrillers, a jazz banjoist, and a St. Patrick's Day celebration. Lots of music this week, so stay tuned. Suncoast FYI starts next. Thanks for joining us today on Suncoast FYI. The mission statement of the Paragon Fine Art Festival is to create a high quality art destination and where better to do that than right here on the Sun Coast. Now that festival is taking place this weekend beginning tomorrow and continuing into Sunday and we have one of the artists joining us here now to tell us a little bit more about herself and her artwork. This is Cheryl Summer. Welcome to the show. Thanks Cassie. So Thank tell you. me tell me a little bit about yourself. Well Cassie I am a, a self-taught artist. Mm -hmm. I'm an abstract mixed media painter. And I love spreading my color all over the United States. And I'm so happy to be down on the Sun Coast finally after living in Ohio for oh, I bet. many years. Especially with the weather they've got this time of year. That's right. Um, I have very interesting paintings. I am an abstract realism. Mm -hmm. So I, I swing anywhere from doing abstracts like you see over here on my right hand side. Mm -hmm to painting sailboats, to painting buildings, to painting beautiful flowers and landscapes. Huh. And I, because I'm a research artist and experimental, mm -hmm. I enjoy everything I do um, just to give everybody that appreciates art something different to look at. Yeah, it sounds like you have a lot of variety. And we can see that just in the, in the artwork that you brought today. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. I see the sailboats and I see the, the abstract here. And I love the color that you use. Well. Um, I've been given this wonderful gift of being able to mix the warm and cool colors as you see in this piece right here, but keep the vibrance because my paintings, when my customers tend to look at them after they purchase every day, they still come back and they completely tell me how happy they are. You know, they still love my artwork, it makes them real happy and that's yeah. kind of my mission, um, to make people happy. And even people that come to my, my booth, mm -hmm. they walk in and they're like, wow, this, this makes me feel good. Because like you said, you have the, the colors. The colors are enough to bring up the happy feelings. Right. And this is what art is all about for every artist that paints, to make people feel good. Art is everywhere we see it, mm -hmm. all around. And where can people go for more information about your artwork? Um, I have a website, mm -hmm. um, artistcherylsummers.com. Mm -hmm. And you can see some of my more interesting pieces and the abstract realism pieces listed on there also. And then, you, of course, you'll be at the Paragon Art Festival this I weekend. I certainly will. I'm really excited. It's the first time I've done um, the Paragon Art Festival in Sarasota. So I'm very excited to be there. Um, just moving to Dacomas four months ago. And, and the, people have to come check you out this they weekend. They have to come check me out. <laughs> and um, with this festive yeah a weekend that we're going to be having this coming weekend yep. the hours on uh, saturday and sunday are 10 to 5 mm -hmm. down on Gulfstream avenue and i hope we can i can see as many people stop by all right well definitely go check it out we have another artist from the paragon art festival coming up next as well so stay tuned And we continue now with more from Paragon Art Festival. Another artist joins us now. This is Joan Michelin and her representative slash husband here, Skip Ennis, who uh, is going to be helping us answer questions for the day today. So she's a fine art jeweler and has brought some beautiful jewelry with us. Again, she will be at the art show as well. So tell me, uh, what role does an artist have in society? Well, I think historically we've had a very important role um, in terms of uh, inspiring and you know going into um, abandoned areas and rejuvenating them. In our particular case, um, you know, we're not about rock and metal, Cassie. We're about um, marking the moment for people oh. um, and, and our collectors who come back and report some of the presentations that have been made and the responses uh, are very meaningful. So we're creating future heirlooms um, and, it's, and, and it's about uh, making memories. It really is beautiful yeah. and you. they're very unique as well. Very cool. So um, how, do you, how do you know when that's finished? Well, I think basically um, the completion for any artist, and, and certainly it's true with us, is, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, is that um, when someone responds to your art, uh, whether it's a painting or a piece of fine jewelry or, 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 or anything, if someone comes up to you and you're an author and you get the feedback, that, that to me completes it. The, 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 the person who's interacting with it, the viewer, the reader, uh, that, that's, where, um, that's what completes it for us, I believe. Yeah? Oh, okay, so when you're working on it, and does someone get to see it, or or if somebody doesn't react to it, do you continue? Do you continue on with it a little when bit more? When they put it on, that completes it. Their response, their reaction. 
Oh, we're okay. looking for a gasp. Yes. When a okay. gasp occurs, <laughs> then you know that success. Is, yes. Success. Exactly. So, besides being at the festival, um, where can people go for more information about the artwork? Well, we we have a website uh, which is uh, very user friendly: www.joanmitchland.com. Um, and uh, pretty much everything you need to know is on there, uh -huh. uh, as well as Paragon's site. So, yeah. yeah. And can we go over again the date and time of the festival? Yes. Uh, it is this weekend, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, it's very good hours for the artists. A little short for, uh, for, for <laughs> now that it's daylight savings. 10 to 5. 10 um, to 5. Saturday, Sunday. And it's uh, right on Gulfstream, paralleling 41. And it's uh, basically the corner of Maine and Gulfstream. And All right. Really needs help. Well, make sure you go check it out this weekend. The weather should be good as well. And thanks for joining Thank us goodness. today, guys. Thank you, Cassie. All right. <laughs> and coming up next on Suncoast FYI, Sally Fernandez joins us to tell us about her latest books. So stay tuned. Welcome back to Suncoast FYI. I'm Cassie Nall. Sally Fernandez is a novelist of provocative political thrillers and has a new book coming out. She joins me now to tell us more. So welcome to the show. Thank you, Cassie, for the opportunity. So I understand you began your writing career in 2008. How did you decide to become an author? Well, I was never in, um, I was in banking and project management before, so mm -hmm. I never dreamed I would ever write a novel. No, those don't sound like they're related yeah. at all. No. So in, uh, actually in 2007, leading up to the 2008 presidential election, mm -hmm. I paid particular attention to the uh, political spin that mm -hmm. was endless. Yes. <laughs> endless. But as a political junkie, mm -hmm. uh, it gave me an interesting challenge. So I decided to take one event that was repeated ad nauseum uh -huh. and uh, see if I could weave it into a plausible plot, sort of a kind of a what if. Yeah. And that's when I decided I really wanted to write a political thriller steeped in facts. <laughs> and it just happened. And it just happened. That is really, actually, that's really cool. Yeah, it was. It was an exciting uh, adventure to try to get away from business writing and turn out fiction. But I decided, I, I love the creativity. So you kind of mix the two together. Exactly. That's a challenge for the reader. Yeah, it was really, it was really fun. And when I wrote the book, I, what I wanted to do is, is I didn't want to write a book just to entertain. Mm -hmm. I wanted to write something that would inform, but also cause the reader to question the plausibility, the what if. Yeah, so. yeah. And you and you leave it up to them to find out what is fact versus what is fiction. Exactly. That is very nice. You make your you make your readers think. <laughs> All right. So we're calling it a political thriller mm -hmm. steeped in facts. How would you describe that genre? Uh, it's a suspenseful read with mm -hmm. political overtones, um, but I also believe with the contemporary facts, especially today, mm -hmm. that it, they can't be ignored. Yeah. And uh, if I can quote a wise man, Pericles, who said 430 BC, uh -huh. uh, just because you're not interested in politics doesn't mean politics won't be interested in you. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, just quickly another luminary, uh, Francis Bacon said, truth is hard to tell, sometimes you need fiction to make it plausible. And that kind of actually became my mantra because it kind of captured the essence of my writing. It, yeah, it sounds like that. Actually, that fits perfectly in there. So tell me more about your first novel and how you ended up with what you call the Simon Trilogy. <laughs> the first novel, Brotherhood Beyond the Yard, uh, started in 1995 at Harvard University. Mm -hmm. And a group of uh, scholars got together, formed a study group, and they called themselves La Fratellanza, <laughs> the Brotherhood. Mm -hmm. And they decided they would uh, try to put together a fictional plot only as an intellectual game. But years later, they came together and the plot morphed into reality. Oh. And it involves the election of the president, the banking crisis, uh, computer hacking, and international terrorism. My goodness, you cover a broad <laughs> subject matter there. Goodness gracious. And that's all in that trilogy? That's all in The Brotherhood. Oh, just The Brotherhood. But when I wrote The Brotherhood, I knew it didn't end. Uh -huh. And I knew there had to be a sequel. So the second book, Noble's Quest, uh, starts off with earth-shaking events in Europe and uh, the U.S. They're seemingly detached, but uh, they are not coincidental. Yeah. And there's land grabs, uh, political manipulations, and Tara's camp in this one. <laughs> Look how excited she is about all of this. <laughs> you get so excited when you're talking about it. Um, okay, so with your fourth novel about to be published, which we happen mm -hmm. to have a secret yes. copy here, um, does that mean that your trilogy became a tetralogy, I guess that would be? <laughs> Well, when I finished the third book um, to complete the Simon Trilogy, The Ultimate Revenge, I told my husband that I had a fourth book that needed to be told. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, Trilogy is three. Yep. <laughs> but I had this story. I had to, in the characters, Simon is the, the mastermind of the uh -huh. terrorist threats. I had to explain the lingering, uh, the, the death that happened. Yeah. 
And also, it was a perfect opportunity to bring back La Fatalanza mm -hmm. to solve some of the real issues that we're facing today. Uh -huh. So the uh, president was facing a bunch of crises, and he brought together, he asked Noble to bring back La Fatalanza, mm -hmm. go underground, devise a plan to solve the crisis, mm -hmm. jobs, uh, huh. our statue in America. Um, and uh, they have 65 days to do it. Mysterious crimes continue to happen, wondering whether Simon is still alive. Uh -huh. And basically, our main characters, one is out of contact, the other's life is at risk, the country's at crisis. And it sounds like this is a storyline that could continue. Yes. Continue. It could continue. More. It could. And right. so the answer will be in the ultimate event of, in uh, Redemption on April 7th. All right. And where can people go for more information? More information uh, to my website, mm -hmm. sallyfernandez.com. All right. Well, thanks for coming on the show today. Good luck with your new book. Thank you very much, Cassie. <laughs> and coming up on Suncoast FYI, have you ever heard a jazz banjo? Well, we'll show you. We have a world-famous banjoist joining us next, so stay tuned. That is so cool. Thank you. I can tell you we've never had a jazz banjoist on, uh, on the show before, or banjo I hear in that a lot. I hear that a lot. <laughs> I was when I, read, when I read the description, I was like, jazz banjoist, this is going to be awesome. Oh, thanks. I was really excited. Okay, so let's introduce her real quick here. Okay. This is Cynthia Sayer. She is a jazz banjoist and a vocalist as well, and she's going to be performing this weekend in our area. So welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm very glad to be here. Um, I'm going to be giving a couple of concerts at uh, the Glen Ridge Performing Arts Center and uh, Saturday night, 8 p.m. and uh, Sunday afternoon, 2 p.m. And uh, I have two wonderful musicians with me, Mark Neuenschwander, who's like the bass player in yeah. the Sarasota area, and Alan Vachey, who's come here from the Orlando area, who's a well-known uh, jazz swing clarinetist. And uh, they're really awesome. And we sell out almost every year, or pretty much every year, I guess I shouldn't yeah. say almost. And so get your tickets early. I hope you'll come and join us. Wow. That's yeah. how, okay, so this sounds really cool. So let me ask you about you real quick, though. How did you get into hot jazz and swing and a banjo? <laughs> well, I, I kind of did it a little bit backwards from uh, many musicians who my colleagues tell stories about how they, you know, they see this instrument and they know they want to play it and they grow up and they become musicians. I, I wanted a drum set and my parents, I had a big <laughs> argument with them and my parents were like, no way, we're not going to have drums in the house. Yeah. And I was really like, I really want them. And one day I came home from school and there was this banjo on my bed uh -huh. and I took one look at it. I immediately knew it was a bribe for the drums <laughs> and it was supposed to be this distraction and I hardly knew what it was. And uh -huh. I just thought, okay, I'll play this thing, you know. And I started taking some banjo lessons. And uh, the, it ended up that the woman in our hometown, and I had no idea at the time that it was even rare for there to be a woman uh, jazz banjo player. I didn't know that that was like a freaky thing in and of itself. But uh, she had put an ad in the local paper. That's how my parents even learned about it. And she ended up being this really important role model to me. I had never met an adult, in the, a professional in the arts before. Mm -hmm. And she was kind of this living example of... Um, I don't know, a whole life that sounded so exciting and wonderful. Yeah. Uh, but um, I still wasn't planning to be a musician. To me, it was fun. It was a hobby. And uh, I thought I'd be a lawyer. I did well in school, and I got my undergrad degree. And I wanted to take a couple years off, or a year maybe, you know, before <laughs> I went to law school. <laughs> that's the trap right there. <laughs> I know. Yes, yes, yes. And, of course, I just never went back. And oh. I had to give myself permission to do, like, this was really this fun. This is okay. And you have fun, right? Yeah, you enjoy I your job. I love what I do. I think it's amazing. It gives, it's, it's hard work. Being a musician is really hard work. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people think, oh, you just play you know yeah but no there's, there's a lot more that goes there's, into there's it. a lot more that goes into it yeah but i love it so you are one of the top four string banjoists worldwide <laughs> so there's also five string banjo yes that's the difference yes in there. 
the difference, four string and five string, and, and interestingly, like the worlds between four string and five string used to be very separate. Most people, when they think of banjos, they think of like bluegrass and country music and folk music, and that's actually a whole different instrument. Uh, I have four strings, they have five, and they do this like finger picking thing. Yeah. And uh, I play with a flat pick, and uh, sort of like a jazz guitar, I strum, and I also play single string. It's a whole different thing, and the like. I don't know how to play five-string banjo, uh -huh. and they don't know how to play this, even though they're all called banjos. And people totally don't realize there's all different genres, different history, different everything. But it used to be that there was this big gap between us, and now there's a lot of crossover going on. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um Shortly, tell me what it was like to play in Woody Allen's world-renowned jazz band for over ten years. I know that sounds like a uh, it is a huge <laughs> It's uh, it was it was a great pleasure. Woody uh, is he plays clarinet. I understand you're a clarinet uh -huh. player. I learned that from your guest, from yeah. your other guest today. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he actually is a really good, I'm asked all the time if he's good at what he does, he's great. Uh, he plays with amazing emotional abandon and being in his band was an experience to play early New Orleans jazz in a very authentic way. Most of the time I played piano in, in the oh, band. Okay. I did play some banjo in there too. Uh -huh. And uh, I loved it, it was fun, it was great, it was good music. And good now music. this weekend we get to sample your banjo playing again, time and place for your concerts? Um, it's at the Glen Ridge Performing Arts Center, and uh, Saturday night, 8 p.m., Sunday afternoon, 2 p.m. And people and need to get the tickets for it. Yes, so. we, we've sold out the past few years, so get your tickets soon, and I hope, I hope, and I've got wonderful people playing with me. Where can they go for more information? Um, online, you can get tickets online at uh, gpactix.com, gpac, uh, Yeah, with, with an X. We'll put it on the screen. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, or, or you can call the box office and uh, they'll, they'll happily sell you some tickets. All right. Well, thanks for joining us today and good luck this weekend. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> and next on Suncoast FYI, more musical fun. This time we will help you get in the mood for St. Patrick's Day. So stay tuned. Welcome back to Suncoast FYI. I'm Cassie Knoll. The Irish Rover St. Patrick's Day celebration has been called the most authentic St. Paddy's Day celebration in Sarasota. And joining me now to tell us more are Paul Duffy and Gary Reinstrom. Welcome to the show, guys. Oh, Hi, Cassie. How are you? I'm, I'm doing great. You guys are so much fun. Oh. We've had a lot of fun in the commercial break on this. <laughs> All right, so tell us a little bit about the event here. Well, it's on Saturday at the Farm Bureau, which is right next to Big Cat Habitat. And that will be from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. We got Irish entertainment all day, folks. Mm -hmm. We got uh, bagpiping, obviously. We got Gary uh, piping hot, the great bagpiping show where they interact with each other and play tunes. We got Irish dancing. Mm -hmm. I'll be playing with my guys as well, doing traditional Irish uh, music and uh, audience participation songs. You know, just generally a good time. We've I would got say St. Patrick's Day to me is just a good time. Yes. Always. Yes. It's like always they say in Ireland, any excuse for a party. Yes, yeah. any excuse for a party, certainly. So were there more, was there more entertainment you were going to continue? Yes. Well, we, we have um, Greg the Fiddler Holt, who's an amazing guy from, he spent a lot of years in Nashville. He plays bluegrass and Irish stuff as well. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, as I say, music all day. We got Guinness Snithic's harp on tap. We got corned beef and cabbage, fish and chips, meat pies, sausage rolls, all <laughs> the great, uh, all the, the food that you know and love, folks. I was going to say, and this is really his accent. He really is from Ireland. Yes, I've been here a long time, though. <laughs> I'm sure the accent has softened a bit. But it goes well with, with your, uh, your event coming up. And this time of year, definitely, it helps, yeah. Yeah, it certainly does. And, of course, we got the green going on here, too. Yep. So this is also a family-friendly event. So what type of Absolutely. activities will be there for kids? We've got inflatables for the kids. We've got face painting and, you know, lots of other activities. Um, we've got an ice cream truck and all that stuff, all that good stuff, so... Not to mention just participating in all the Irish fun will be right. a good time. Right, absolutely, yeah. And so, Gary. We're hi. also going to have the first brass there at 2 o'clock. Uh -huh. The first brass is an ensemble that uh, uh, we started about in 2012, uh, up to 16 brass players. On this particular occasion, we'll, we'll have five and a drummer. Oh. And, uh, doing looking forward to that. Oh, Dixieland stuff, and it's, 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 it's a lot of fun. So wait, are you both in that too? I am a, a brass player when I'm not playing the bagpipes. Yeah. Oh my goodness, what do you play? Uh, French horn. 
A little bit of trumpet. Oh, mm -hmm. lovely. And you're a clarinet player. I am a clarinet player. <laughs> I am. So I don't do the whole brass thing, though. I have given it a try once in a while. It Not yet. It doesn't come out very well. It doesn't come out very good. And then you play... I'm a saxophone player, really. But, oh. you know, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, opportunities to play saxophone and Irish music are few, yes. as everybody knows. So I also play guitar, keyboard, play I, penny whistle. And then you play pipes a little bit too. Pipes I do, uh -huh. yeah. Not as well as Gary, that's why I have him here. And that's why he wears, he goes with the full getup to, <laughs> yes. to go with the pipes there. So yeah. you're there with, what was the name of your band that you're there the with? The First Brass uh -huh. and the Jacobites Piping Hot. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what time do you guys play at? Uh, we'll be playing throughout the day, but the brass are going to play at 2 o'clock. Okay. Yeah. And again, this event, the weather is going to be fantastic oh, if you're going to be heading out mm -hmm. to check this out. Beautiful. Sure. Yes. yes. Um, okay, so tell me a little bit about yourself, your history. Well, I grew up on a circus in Ireland, uh, Duffy's Circus, which is one of the ma main circuses in Ireland. There was two uh, in those days, Fawcett's and Duffy's. I was on Duffy's. Did numerous uh, acts in the ring, uh, tightrope walking, juggling, and stilt walking, <laughs> stuff like that. But, I mean, uh, in upper teens, I, I, I figured there's got to be more out there. So yeah. I joined a band and never looked back. And you've done pretty well so far. <laughs> uh, not complaining, Cassie. Everything's yeah. good. That's very good. And then good. you actually have a German background. 100%. And my folks uh, uh, are from northern Germany. And that was the area of Germany that was uh, occupied by the British. Uh -huh. And that was the very first time my dad ever saw or heard the bagpipes. And then 30 years later, his kid is playing at, at Riverview High School, you know. And, uh -huh. and so it's... It's been a long journey, but then we, uh, they immigrated to Brooklyn, New York, mm -hmm. and then been down here in Sarasota since I was 10, so that would be, what, like about 10, 10 years? Yeah, no, I'm 20. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. No, I'm not <laughs> your 21st birthday's coming up soon. We'll celebrate. Plus sales tax. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That is really cool that such a, such a variety of ethnicities and such a variety of instruments you guys play, and we're actually going to have a demonstration of those instruments coming up next, so stay tuned. That's our show for today, and thanks so much for joining us. If you would like to promote your business or event on Suncoast FYI, we would love to hear from you. Just call our sales department at 941-361-4223. I'm Cassie Knoll, and we'll see you next Friday on Suncoast FYI, but hang around just a little bit longer. We have a preview of the music that you can hear tomorrow at the Irish Rover St. Patrick's Day celebration with Paul Duffy and Gary Reinstrom. Check it out. Now her eyes, they shone like diamonds You'd think she was queen of the land And she was, and her hair hung over her shoulders Tied up with a black velvet band Woo! Now as I went walking in Sarasota Not intending to stay very long Well I met with a frolicsome dance